Hello, QP right? Nelson Lawson, losing it. <laughs> Hello, my interview with Cover Guys um, ended because he's in Nashville in a storm with very bad um, internet. So it's just me today. And if you have any questions or would like to join, feel free. I could tell lots of crazy stories or methods or techniques about my art making process. But we don't have to talk about art. We could talk about a whole bunch of stuff. So do you have any question, QP Wright? Or Nelson losing it? Just let me know. Um, let's see. What I could talk about is my artwork. I can talk about the three main genres. Or I could just talk about my day. I have had a crazy day. It started with a friend that I met, well, an acquaintance now. Um, he reached out online asking how you make it as a, an artist full time. And all I had to tell him was about my own experience, because that's all I know. And and it was an interesting moment to, to do some introspection there and figure out what, what I do that made my success. If it, if you could even call it that, I just, I love making art and I'm lucky to have such a passion and something that I love in my life. I'm in it for the long haul. I'll always be making artwork, but I have side hustles for sure. I, I teach art. I take a, on several odd jobs and stuff. Um, for a while in Seattle, I was helping a wonderful lady who does interior design and stage house, she stages houses for sale. I was helping her move furniture and stuff, so that was good. But, you know, I, I think what's helped me the most is the one-on-one -on -one connection with people that I make, um, whether it's meeting them at an art show or teaching them in a class that I'm running. Those things all have been really important, the one-on-one -on -one connection so thanks for join, joining. Hey, are you still in Seattle, Eli? Anyway, um, my interview with Covert Guys had to end because his uh, internet was really, really bad. He was in the middle of a storm in Nashville and it was just, it, the screen kept freezing. So it's just me and I'll be answering questions, and if you want to join me and talk art or life or this crazy time that we're in, feel free. Yep, I miss Seattle. I'm glad, uh, glad to talk and say hi to somebody from there. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Let's see. I was just talking about the day I had. I was talking to this guy who reached out to ask about how to make it as an artist full time. And I'm like, man, do I even know that answer? Where am I at now? I am in Long Beach, California. I really like it here. The art community was really welcoming, still is, even though this funky time has everybody sequestered. Today I did an online Zoom drawing, with a figure drawing, with uh, my friend Shadia. At least she was the art model posing. Yeah, people are getting creative. They aren't letting uh, this strange time stop them. If anything, um, they're, they're evolving. Like me, I'm, I'm trying to get more involved in this online community I, of artists. I feel like I've had a lot of really good conversations lately with some friends of mine. And I'm thinking, man, that could be a podcast. I don't want to do a podcast with a bunch of new equipment that I have to buy and software that I have to use for editing. So this is like the easiest way to do it right now. Just Instagram live. I like it. It's like a podcast, but people can jump on and share their opinion and conversations and send little hearts. Yeah. So... Anyway, let's see.
yeah, I was talking about my day. I had that talk with the artist about how to make it. All I offered him was my own experience of teaching art and reaching out to people one-on-one and being real with people, you know? Real moments, talking about life and art. And then um, did some chores around the house. And then right before the interview, I actually went jogging. Um, Exercise has been really important lately. And I enjoyed a really nice jog down to the beach. And then I jogged back. That was, that's was that been really important to me. Um, it's, I've been a runner for, well, really since high school, I guess, even before then. But I ran in college and on a team, and now I, I continue to run. What about you, Eli? What's what's your day been like? Do you have any routine? Here, I might as well interview you. If you want, feel free to jump on. If not, no worries. Hey, yo. Hey, man. How's it going? It's, it's going okay. Uh, man, my routine is like, no, I don't really have one. I try to exercise in the morning and I have a little set of mantras. Um, and then I have like this, you know, this, this little personal routine, but my whole world has really been turned upside down. I was working at a cafe and I got laid off. So luckily I'm on unemployment now. Um, uh, but I just started hopping on Instagram live a bunch as well. Um, started a little series where I'm hosting musicians and performers and then doing self portraits in the background. Right on. So, That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, It's like this, this is a really cool format to, uh, to join people online. So it's, you know, it's a blessing in all of this. It is. And I feel like, you know, as unsure, I was just talking with Justin before he got cut off with the really bad weather. He's in a storm in Nashville right now. But um, we were talking about like, we don't know what's going to be on the other end of this. And people are getting really creative right now. And, you know, we're lucky, because we have something that we love as artists. We've We've found a hobby, we found a passion, and we're gonna keep doing it. A lot of people right now, they are realizing that they don't have a hobby. They've been entertained like 24 seven, and now they have to spend time by themselves and it's pretty scary. So, you know, they're going, they're they're looking to um, learn the guitar or learn how to draw, you know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I I do feel very blessed to have this as sort of a safety net. Uh, And then immediately I was just like, I did sort of panic for like a month. And then I'm like watching everybody do these live things. Yeah, I mean, it's nitty, it's gritty. Everybody knows like my first view, I I wasn't shaven. Nobody cares, you know, they like, (laughs) like everybody's haircut is long, you know. Um, Yeah. But in the beginning, like I was really, uh, it was weird in the beginning because um, I remember early March I had, oh, that's nice, look at that. Oh yeah, thanks, I did this today. Very cool, man. Here, here I did some some really cool ones in, a few days ago. Uh, what, what were you saying, early March? Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I had to stop teaching, so I just went into my studio and started making artwork, but I felt like this, huge feeling of irresponsibility was creeping over me like I was ignoring larger issues and it's like Juliet from Seattle Juliet Aristides it's like she oh yeah she heard me or something she heard my feelings because um she wrote this wonderful article in her blog about making art in hard times and it basically said um you know if we as artists just waited for um a safe, secure time to make artwork, art would never be made, you know? Totally. Yeah. And that spoke to me and I was like, oh man. And I jumped into my studio and I was filled with purpose and a sense of duty. And I've been on a creative streak ever since. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm looking at all these self portraits you've been doing. Yeah. There's like 20 of them. (laughs) Yeah. And what I'm noticing is, uh, 
you, as many others, have stopped changing shirts. You're always, yeah. you're always wearing the black shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they change colors too, but I always make it black shirt. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, well, man. You always have t-shirts on. Have you thought about yeah. like getting multiple mirrors and using them to do like a different angle of your self portrait? Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I, I do that sometimes like sort of set up a little infinity mirror action. They're all behind the, the plants right now. So I've just been moving this little one around. So I just set it up to do a standing one today because I've been on the desk for the other days. Dude, you have a nice little apartment there, man. It's like Oh yeah, thanks. This is so I'm in Pioneer Square in in, in an artist building. So this is Oh, cool. It's here. Hey, uh, Justin. Yeah, and then that's sort of the the window area. Uh Justin was able to join and watch right now. I, we lost uh Covergeist. Um uh, we lost him in a storm in Nashville with weather. So Eli. Oh, nice. And he, he just rejoined? Yeah. But. Okay, perfect. So I can hop off and he can join again. I don't know. Like if his internet is good, is it good? Should, should you join back on? Or are we just going to tour Eli's studio here and save Cobra <laughs> guys for another day? Justin, if you hear us, let us know. <laughs> we, uh, we can alternate guests. We're really flexible. There's no rules on this uh, interview. Right. It's been awesome. Are you able to download these after you, you do them? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I put them on my YouTube channel. Cool. I For some reason, it's it gave me the option to download mine the first couple times. And then recently, it's not. I can only upload to IGTV. So I don't know why it's doing that. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you but should, that, uh, you could also helpful. like screen record it, you know? Okay, I don't think I have that option because I have a Google phone. Oh, well, well, get with the program and get an iPhone. Yes, no. yes. but it's <laughs> nice to hear that you're getting it. I'll look into it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. You got your place set up in Pioneer Square. That's, uh, do you have any upcoming shows or anything? Um, no, I, I'm doing this online series, and I do have one booked with an artist every day through the end of May. Um, so that feels like a show. Like, we were doing a lot of different community art events around Seattle, um, like, like once a week with, like, you know, 10 plus artists or something. So yeah. that was sort of, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been a difficult time for sure to not be able to gather for us. So I, I was just missing everybody and then started this one-on-one -on -one sort of collaboration series where I just invite another artist uh, and I sort of focus on a musician or a performer and then I sort of zone out and just draw. Um, but that's sort of how I've been featuring what I'm doing and what those are around me are doing as well. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's been, you know, pretty cathartic. I just started it this week, but it's really been helpful. So what are you trying to do with these self-portraits? Um, I don't know. I don't, I like doing them. Uh, I don't really have a goal. I think just trying to do as many as I can is the goal. And then maybe eventually like have a, have a show with a thousand of them. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. A thousand. I mean, cause I, I've, done, I've done like 30 this week. Um, and I really like, I, I draw myself pretty quite often. That's a 2018, 2015, 2019 down there. Like they're all over the place. Uh, so it'd be really funny to, to put something like that together. I, I, I've sort of, I've drawn myself. It's sort of been a theme for, since I started drawing. So what what so, is there a deeper context? Is it just being prolific? Like w why the self portraits? Because a um, lot of them are very much like they're confronting the viewer. They're just like looking directly at the viewer. Totally. Well, I guess I do it because I'm available. I I'm a model, and I'll sit here and and 
sit still for myself. And then it's just, uh, I guess, practice for me, putting putting the hours in. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. And like, sort of, if I if I spend time doing only a few pieces, I could totally do that. Or I could spend time doing all these pieces, um, and and then try to try to learn from it that way as well. So. Yeah, they yeah. look pretty rendered um, for like. Uh some of them rough. Have you ever really tried to push the rendering on one? Like do like a 30 hour por portrait or something? I've pushed it a little bit. I don't think I've ever done 30 hours, but I've probably done a few 10 hour drawings. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that, that'd be fun to do another one of those. But yeah, now they're like maximum 20 minutes and then, and then I move on. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but that was probably a gunshot or a firework here in the oh. LBC. So we'll see. I think it was a firework. I hope it was a firework. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah. We have some of those here in Pioneer Square as well. Yeah. Man, you know, being in LBC now in Long Beach, like I didn't know Snoop Dogg was from Long Beach and now I follow him shamelessly on Instagram and social media. He's a pretty yeah. funny character, man. He's always posting yeah. some funny stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. How long have you been in California? Almost nine months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I really like it here. It's um, the art community was that it's been really welcoming even during this crazy time. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. It, when I got here, I just started going to all these like uh, figure drawing workshops and figure drawing classes. And one that I went to, this guy was like, oh, you're pretty good. You're you're a figure uh, artist. You know, you draw the figure. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, you should go to this potluck. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll go to a potluck. And it was in uh, Santa Monica. And I show up at this potluck with like macaroni. And I don't know what to expect. But it's at a really nice house. And they got like the backyard set up with a bunch of chairs. And turned out... David Kassan was the guest artist there and he was doing his presentation for the show that he had upcoming at um, at one of the galleries here at on college and I was like holy crap and I got to meet him and a ton oh, wow. of other artists like Sean Barber you know this guy who like does tattoos here um, okay. in LA awesome he's also an amazing painter and I actually I don't think I've ever been starstruck before, really. And like, I was in the in, at this place watching David Kassan talk. And like, there's this dude in front of me. And, and I'm like, wow, he's got a lot of tattoos all over. And I'm like, and I could see a side profile. And I'm like, holy shit. Holy shit. Is that Sean Barber? Am I sitting behind Sean Barber? And like, during intermission, um, you know, he he got up and I'm like, hey, I, I'm a, um, I'm a huge fan. I've watched your video. I showed it to my students when I was teaching in the high school and art, you know, this and that. And, and I'm like, I'm I'm Daniel and you're and he was wearing a name tag and I couldn't even say his name. And I was like, and you're and you're and, you're, and he's like, Sean, I'm Sean Barber. I'm like, ah, no, it's so cool. And <laughs> anyway, he was he was so kind and like yeah come by the studio anytime you know we got artwork and this and that and yeah i at that same place it was quite a night i remember i know everybody's mingling i'm like i can't believe i'm here this is crazy like look at all these amazing artists and and she's like yeah it's a pretty good place we like to foster this community and and it was her home and i'm like oh like this is, you're putting this on, this is awesome. I just wanna say thank you when we started talking art. And she's like, yeah, you know, I've been doing art, but I haven't been able to do much, you know? And I'm like, that's cool. Like anything, you know, any any paintings lately? And she was like, yeah, my last painting, you know, it, it found a good home. And I was like, yeah, anybody I might know, like, you know, she's like, Brad Pitt bought it. And I'm like, oh, do you have my card? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like I, that's awesome. That's so cool. So 
anyway, California has been like a, a really great place to be surrounded by creatives that are competitive, but in a really friendly way, you know, they encourage you also. So I like it. Right on. Do you Good think you'll stay that. in Seattle? I don't know. I was actually thinking this might be my last year. This is my fourth year in this studio here. Pioneer Square is rough to live in. Uh, and like the, you know, it's, it's okay. I have really found a niche with the music community and, and I do a lot of live drawing at music events and I sort of produce some different little jam sessions and then some, some big community art shows uh with with a few with a few friends so that has been really cool but like as far as the visual art community um i i guess i feel mostly like in an outsider so i'm sort of like i i could go wherever i'm dreaming of moving to greece actually greece, next wow. year we'll do it see man if that that's happens. cool yeah, yeah we'll stay in touch and we'll do this from the lbc to greece do you totally. know what part of greece are you gonna be by the black um, sea In the southwest of Greece uh, on the coast. Have you ever been there? I have been, yeah. My, my great-grandfather is from there, and I visited with uh, some cousins and aunts and uncles, and it's just this really beautiful 2,000-person village. And then there's this little island called Idra that's just off the coast of it. You take a, a boat over there, it's like a 30-minute boat ride or something. And Idra has like 1,000 people on it, and there are no motorized land vehicles. And it's like a, it's like a little art island, and it's just it's so romantic. And I'm Bunch like, of Greek I, hippies. Like, yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I'm like, I think I I could potentially make that work. So you know what? I'm I'm just gonna sort of put that out there and visit in September. That's cool, man. That's cool. I had the chance to go to Greece uh, when I was in Bulgaria for a while. I was in Bulgaria for almost two months just uh, doing an art residency there. And and I loved it, man. I, I still keep in touch with a lot of my friends that I made there. And um, yeah, I couldn't stay longer and go to Greece. I, I had a, a plane ticket already and stuff, but the invite was there. And next time, you know, I'll be I'll be going to the Black Sea for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but I, I fell right in love on. with Bulgaria and the people. It's beautiful. I've never been there. I've just been to Greece and France. Those are my only two European countries that I've been to. Cool. And then I went to Thailand last October. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, one of the, my only connection with that is like, uh, I have this band that, you know, they're my, one of my top, favorite bands they were my favorite band for such a long time in high school and stuff and since then you know we've i've got the chance to work with them and they're so amazing i love their artwork their their music and the lead singer has a story of um being in in thailand where the mekong river is and he, he has a song called mekong and whenever I hear Thailand whenever I hear Mekong. I always think of Roger Klein and the Peacemakers. And I was just like, oh, dang. Like, that's just a killer song. And it, like, is deep in my heart, you know? And I, I just love it so much. So, anyway, it it paints a really romantic picture of uh, Thailand. And I definitely want to go there. What was your experience like? It was super fun. Um my buddy who I, I lived with in college for a couple of years lives there and grew up there. Okay. Uh, so he's a local and I just stayed with him. Uh, and I took my cousin who's uh, from Eastern Washington. So I, I, a cousin who I haven't spent very much time with. Um, so it was a little family trip over there visiting a college bud. Nice man. We were, very yeah, cool. We were there. We were there for a week and it was, uh, it was beautiful. It was just breathtaking. Were the bugs big? No, actually. Uh, I did get a little leech bite, but um, the bugs were more manageable than Seattle. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, well, so I mean, may maybe not with a little leech bite, but <laughs> it, 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 was, it was no big deal. 
Um, it is still it is still on my leg though. You can see it here. It's like it's that little dot right there. Oh dang. So that, that was six months ago. <laughs> hey babe. My <laughs> wife just joined the stream. Oh nice. Yeah. So dang, I didn't know leeches could leave a mark when they bite you. Yeah, I didn't know either. And it was just this tiny, it was like half an inch. And it just left a little bit of blood and all the locals were like, oh, you're fine. Like, whatever. You don't need to go see a doctor. Like, I was like, because I was like, I, it, is this going to give me an infection? Like, what's up? And it was bleeding quite a bit, but <laughs> from it was, a leech it was fine. Just, 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 a, just a little mark. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to think of like the worst bite I've ever gotten, but uh yeah, I, I, I've been bitten by quite a few things. Yeah. Um, oh, this, they, people think you're Covergeist. This is oh. Eli. Covergeist was in a storm in Nashville and he had very, really, really bad internet. So he couldn't join bees in your hair. Hmm. Oh yeah. My wife, Jackie, she's reminding me of when I had, um, bees in my hair. Oh, wow, 12 of them? They weren't bees, they were wasps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Jeez. there you are. There's Justin. Hey, if you have good internet, you know, we ought to try and let you jump back on here. Yeah. It, oh, and there was another time where I had bees in my hair. Like, my dad had sent me out to the trailer to, like, remove a beehive. And all we had were, like, bed sheets over us, my brother and I, and we remove this beehive and we got stung a ton you know oh, gosh growing up on a ranch there's never a dull moment it's like uh, that's happened um yeah i mean scorpions um, i think i'm immune to scorpions now but uh <laughs> yeah i mean I, a dog bit me like everybody's been bit by a dog though i don't know just crazy stuff Let's see. Yeah. Um, let's well, see. Well, it was guys. great to see you. Maybe I should hop off here and let your other guest, your actual guest, join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and reconnect with him. Hopefully, he has good internet. Oh, awesome. and I got kicked in the balls by a calf. That's true. That brought me <laughs> to my knees. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Eli, well, great to see you, Daniel. Up, man. Thanks for yeah. hopping on and uh, saving the airtime. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's do some sketching on here sometime. Yeah, let's catch up again. It was good to see right you. On. All good right on. Good to see you. Later. Later. Cobra guys, can you jump on now? Can you jump back on? Cobra guys. All right. Hopefully you have better internet. Hey, Yo, I'm back. You're back. Welcome back. I, ne I yeah, never I, lost I hope. Came I knew home, you would find a way. Storm. I what? was downtown and uh, man, the sky was lighting up and it was turned all black and everything. So it's going to rain probably tonight. It rains a lot in Tennessee. But yeah, since now that I'm home, I, I can show you something that I've been doing. Yeah. Are you going to play play the guitar for us? No, no. Um, I've been making a punk rock jacket. Oh, okay, cool. Something fun. Legendary. Uh, it's got like spikes on it and shit. Can you see that? Yeah, holy smokes. That's pretty badass. You made that? Um, yeah, like I bought the jacket and then I've got different patches and shit and put spikes on it. Something creative that I do besides music. I used to paint a lot. I used to, um, the lighting's terrible over here. Uh, That's all I right. Used to paint um, and draw and shit. I haven't done that in years. Yeah. I just picked up the guitar. Let me see if I can get some better lighting. My, my wife is reminding my, me that also I got bit by a crazy girl once. Um, oh. Yeah, she was like... Some people like that. <laughs> <laughs> not the way she bit me, man. Um, 
Like, it was so bizarre. I, uh, I remember, like, this truck, people drove up to the ranch, and I had come back home from, uh, like, a semester in college, and um, this girl gets dropped off at the ranch, and she was like, hey, is your brother here? Is Nick here? And I was like, nope. He's not here. He's not going to be here all day. Like, God, I'm sorry. Like, you should probably call that truck. You know, you could use the phone or whatever. And she was like, no, it's cool. I'll wait. I'm like, all right. Well, while she waited around, I showed her the ranch. You know, I was like, well, you know, you want to come look at the cows or something? She's like, okay. And then she started getting kind of weird and strange. Like her, like, like, like she was on drugs and it was starting to kick in or something. And I was like, hello are you all right and she was like oh laughing to herself and like giggling and and i remember i had like my arms like on a fence post you know a wooden post i was i had my feet on the bottom uh post of the fence and my arms were on top hanging over and we're just looking at the cattle and she she was next to me and and she was on my left side and i was just like this like yeah you know that one we call this and there's conan you know and the bull and and then she like leans over and bites me right here oh shit yes and and i'm not talking like a nibble like she wanted she to took a tear chunk. tear a chunk off and i was in shock i you know i'm there i'm like ah what are you doing stop and she like oh, it wasn't down a hard good bite. and i like pushed her off me bite. And, like really aggressively she fell on the floor and and i was just like what are you doing and she's just laughing and laughing on the ground yeah she w so yeah anyway that's when I got bit by a crazy girl. Shit. That's crazy. That's a good story. <laughs> um, I got a similar story. Like No somebody, way. You got bit by a crazy person? Uh, I got bit in a good way by some crazy girls, but not like that. <laughs> um, not somebody trying to take a chunk out of my arm. But there was this one time I was at the Red Door Saloon, and I, I was working over there, and I, uh, I went out to do something and this strange man me he had like yellow eyes I remember his eyes were like yellow weird looking eyes he's like hey man I like your shirt what's your name and uh, he went to like what's up like one of those things where you're and as I shook his hand he pulled me in close and he said can I pray with you and I said oh fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> I believe in God but I'm not gonna pray with a random stranger on the street it's not in me and and i said no thanks dude have a good day and uh this guy runs into the bar grabs a lady's drink from her and smashes it on the fucking ground and uh jumps over the fence and ran away <laughs> and it was, i was like wow since I didn't pray with this guy, he came in and, like, acted a devil or something. Yeah, he almost assaulted a woman there. That's crazy. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Um, as far as other things, check this this out that I've been working on. So, I regularly make weird business cards. Like, uh, like I'll get, like, a deck of cards and then just write my name on the back or something. We're like, I've done tarot cards before, too. But my favorite is money. Like, uh, <laughs> if your business card's like money, then they might actually, they'll, they'll spend it and somebody else will get it, right? So I've done it before with um, dollar bills. That's so I clever. <laughs> like, you just write on the dollar bill. like Which is illegal. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> and you can go to federal prison for defacing currency. But I don't know well, how much... Well, it's a good they thing they that. don't know who's doing it. <laughs> they would know exactly who is doing it. Actually. I know, I know. But, yeah. um, so, instead of that, I got this fake movie money. Dude, check it out. This fake, fake hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a uh, ten thousand dollars in fake money but you can tell like you got to be a fucking idiot to think that this is actually a hundred dollar bill i mean it's got chinese letters on it in pink <laughs> but at first glance it's like oh that's a hundred dollars you know yeah 
So I think it'd be funny to. I think you got the best business card play that I ever heard. Dollar bill. <laughs> yeah. If somebody like was like, "Hey, uh, you know, here's a business card," and as they were doing it, it looked like they were giving me a hundred dollars. You know, I'd take that. Yeah, yeah. but then and then I like, would laugh the fuck, at how man, genius it was. Money. Yeah, I would laugh at how genius it was and be like, man, this guy's clever. He totally got me. Like, way to go, you know? That's, yeah, that's, the, before that's, that, I mean, I think the tarot cards were pretty cool. It freaked some people out, but I kind of think that that was kind of cool. I mean, I don't know how to read tarot cards or anything, but I've always liked the artwork and like how it's occultic and kind of weird. Um, there's a lot yeah there's a lot of deeper meaning behind it I mean it it was interesting I had my education with tarot cards when I was uh working on an album cover for Roger Klein and the Peacemakers they had this band called or this album called The Independent and I was talking to Roger about it and he wanted like the fool's card you know and the fool's card is um it's like this guy about to walk off a cliff and he's got like his hobo stick with the bag of what he owns okay. on the end, and he's accompanied by a dog. And Roger explained to me that the fool's card is like got two meanings. It's like he's a fool because he's about to walk off a cliff, or you're the fool because he knows something you don't, you know. Mm. And um, he wanted to do something like that with the independent album cover, and so <laughs> I was like, "All right, I'll do it." And I sketched this like troubadour with a guitar on his shoulder and the guitar had like battle damage it's got a bunch of arrows in it you know oh, cool. and instead of the dog he's got like a snake wrapped around his boot and and he's got like a hand on his gun but the hand is a skeleton hand because it's an it's on a symbol of death you know the gun so i mean there there's a lot of meaning in those cards and uh you know i'm i don't believe in the tarot or card or anything like that but i i loved how laden the symbology was like it's just yeah. layer and layer and layer cool. of meaning it was pretty cool i remember so yeah i'd get a pack of tarot cards and then write my name on the back and then give them to people randomly and they would think it would have some fucking meaning or that i would be able to interpret it like if i gave them the fool's card or whatever but the best one i remember though is there's the devil one or something there's a devil card Okay. And I or death. One of those, like the like the dark card or whatever, and I gave it to somebody and I'm like, "Oh shit, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll give you a different one if you want a different card." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "No, it's cool. I'll keep this one." But yeah, I try to do shit besides music. Uh that's something creative making the ja the leather jacket and then the weird business cards. I'd like to get back into painting and stuff, too. Yeah, I saw that you painted a guitar, you know, one of your guitars. That's cool. Oh, no, that one? That one was, uh, dude, that's, a, that's the Honky Tonk Angel. That's the coolest guitar ever. I like um, the name. <laughs> it was hand-painted by Guy Gilchrist, who did the Muppets. Oh. He, he did the cartoons for the Muppets, like Kermit and Piggy. And he also did Annie, a comic, in the funnies, the Sunday funnies. Um, what was the other one he did? He did those, like, little angels or something, like baby angels or something. Anyways, he was a cartoonist, and he, I found that guitar at a pawn shop uh, for 500 bucks. And I bought it, and I played the shit out of it, and uh, I got into... A toxic relationship and to get out of that toxic relationship i pawned that guitar to get a greyhound bus back to denver <laughs> and uh if anybody knows where that guitar is let me know i'll pay them handsomely <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's a that that's a really cool guitar I've, but like i've tried to contact the pawn shop that I sold it to and you can't figure out who bought it. Like it's illegal oh. to, to contact the person who purchased it. Uh, so you have to get like permission from the police. I don't know. I thought about putting wanted posters up for the like guitar. 
with the the picture <laughs> of the guitar said reward <laughs> that'd be funny i wonder how many calls you'd get my cousin steven he just joined he's a he's a musician also oh, a very sweet, talented dude. musician he plays on uh cruise lines all over the place oh yeah. hell yeah yeah that'd be fun I've he's a try he's wizard with the loop pedal and all that with anything i mean he's so talented uh, and he sent me a microphone when he heard I was going to be doing this stuff. And I was like, oh, cool, a microphone. Yeah, I have, I don't know how to use it, really. I, like, I'm trying to, like, how do I plug it into my phone to get better sound? And anyway, thanks yeah. for joining, Steve. What up, Steve? Um, yeah, I, I got uh, a bunch of recording equipment for my house since I had some success last year with YouTube and everything. I was like, let's just upgrade the whole system so I can do pro recordings at home. And I got Premiere and I got a bunch of uh, recording shit. But I really like the phone more, almost. I mean, it's... I know I can make it sound better with all that equipment, but it's like, it's, a, it's like making a record. It's more like a production as opposed to yeah. you just set the phone up, and then it's ready to go. I mean, I mean, it is not perfect, but it is easy. And I like that people can join on and like ask questions and interact, you know, because a podcast like you're pre-recording and there's like a lot of I don't know. I'm dude, Joe Rogan going to Spotify. Did you hear that? Huge. No, that's huge news. He's quitting YouTube and going to Spotify. Okay. The biggest podcast there is. Yeah, I, I listen to it, it every now and then. I like his questions. Dollars. What was that? Hundred million dollars to move. Good for him, man. That's... Joe Rogan experience to Spotify. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hundred million bucks, dude. Good you for him. Spend you know, that. <laughs> you could try. You could try, but that'd be pretty tough to spend a hundred million bucks. Maybe if you bought a yacht or like a country. <laughs> I don't know. A hundred million dollars. I don't know. Like I buy, I buy paint and charcoal, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, good. Well, you'd start doing, if you had a hundred million dollars, do shit like, uh, what's that? That couple Christo, Christo. Christo Jean-Claude. Yeah, dude. Where he did like trippy shit in Central Park where he did he, like a bunch of orange stuff. Yeah. And you need a beach. He, he would like cover things that's his whole thing he liked to see um the fabric is the artwork and the fabric would like uh, catch the light and show form that you might have missed you know by all the details and stuff so you know whether he's like covering a building or a tree or a river like he covers stuff with fabric and textiles because he grew up um his dad was working in the textile industry in, oh, hell, Bulgaria, I think, actually, is where he's from. The Vulcans. Yeah, he's from the Vulcans. And um, he was he's a great artist, too. He can draw. He can paint. Very realism. And he would paint portraits of people and then cover them in, like, a translucent um, cloth. And that's how he would present them. Very avant-garde for the day, you know. And I actually had a chance to listen to him speak um gosh 10 years ago um when he was proposing to cover the river in <laughs> colorado and i was like do yeah. it cover the river <laughs> yeah People well, that's don't cool understand. i'm, I'm like, you know more about him i remember watching a documentary on him and i'm like that guy's cool uh some other cool artists that i really like Kuntz. Right, Kuntz, K O O N T S. I, th yeah. I think his, some of his shit's kind of cool. Um, John Cage, are you familiar with this guy? He's a no. music guy. John yeah. Cage was like Salvador Dali of music. And what he would do is he'd do like Andy Kaufman type presentations of music. Like um, his most popular piece is. Like, I think it's four minutes, 33 seconds. And it's just the band or the orchestra gets up or the pianist like lifts the piano lid. And then it's just 
completely silent for four minutes and 33 seconds and then closes it and then everybody claps. Uh, the other thing he did that was weird is he had uh, 12 radios on stage and they had 24 people. And he had one of them control the volume and one of them control the tuning. <laughs> it was just like absolute chaos. Like you did a I lot think of I remember hearing about this guy in, in, in college or something. Dude, weird stuff. Like he tried yeah. to push the envelope of like what you can consider music. Yeah. Like if a truck is stopping and the hydraulics go <laughs> that yeah. noise, like he'd pick industrial noises and somehow present it as art, which some of that shit's retarded, but. You know, Another some of that stuff, like on, I think on TikTok like the white, or something. Have you ever seen the white canvases that people do? It's like, dude, come on. Come on, yeah. man. Come on. What are you doing? You know, <laughs> like I, I get that question a lot because I paint, you know, I paint realistic stuff like landscapes or people and they're like, oh, doesn't that piss you off? And I'm like, you know, it has its place like they're they're trying to say something but you know it good for them you know they they, they found that very fulfilling for them it it wouldn't fulfill me as an artist you know um and i also yeah. understand a lot of that stuff is like you know somebody trying to do like tax evasion work they're like oh this artist uh he paints with ketchup on canvas and he's great and i'm going to invest and in, these are worth a hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to buy them and donate them to a museum and write it off as a tax write off, you know? And That's so, that cartel money. That's how you launder money, man. We yeah. can get in with those people that are trying to launder money. <laughs> yeah. You ever seen Ozark? I did. Yeah, I've watched Ozark. You know, I thought he, that was a great show. They had yeah. REO Speedwagon on there. They're like, did I miss he, that? He gets off the phone with the cartel and he's like, you need to launder more money. And then he's like, he goes to REO Speedwagon and he's like, well, would you guys mind if we changed the contract and added an extra hundred thousand dollars? They're like, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Is that in season two? Because I haven't watched season two. Oh shit, that's season three. Oh, sorry, spoiler alert. Damn, season three already. I've been spending too much time in my studio. I need to get out. Dude, I got to the bottom of Netflix. <laughs> you know, I watched Tiger King twice. <laughs> I won't judge you. We watched it once and it you know, it just shows you that this is there's a great big world out there with a lot of different people. <laughs> I'm like holy smokes. Man. Yeah, I liked it because it kept going crazier. Like yeah. it started it started right here and it just kept going. Like till the very end it kept getting more ridiculous. And that's why why I enjoyed it, but uh, man, other that's... than that, man, I've been playing a shitload of video games. I yeah, been as Wh what do you play, uh, dude? I got the new Star Wars that Jedi thing where you become a Jedi, which is kind of cool. But the one that I really liked is called Surviving Mars, and it's where really? you like it's like a really complicated tactical game or whatever with. Anyways, you've got to survive on Mars. Which is, is that cool. a PS4 or Xbox? What oh, yeah. That? I got the PS4, man. So. That's pretty cool. Is it like an online incorporate... community where other people play on, like, uh, online with you or what? Uh, I've thought about doing that shit before, like, um, Twitch or whatever, or whatever they do. I mean... A lot of my favorite musicians, they also do like their, like they play Call of Duty or some shit. Um, and it's a different way of interacting with people that like your shit. And like Logic does that, the rapper. Um, Post Malone. Have you ever heard Post Malone play a Bob Dylan song? There's this incredible video of Post oh. Malone before he was famous. And he's playing fingerstyle. Don't Think Twice It's All Right by Bob Dylan and singing it. And I'm like, this is why this guy's famous. is because he's really diverse. Like, his music sounds one way, but he can, like a painter, you know, 
the ability to go from realism to impressionistic or something like that, like to be able to master different styles almost, you know? That's cool. Uh, yeah, being flexible definitely has its benefits. Uh, I, I see it a lot in cooking. You know, somebody's really good at cooking like Mexican food and all of a sudden they'll do like this really good, like, I don't know, Italian dish or something. I, I like watching cooking shows a lot. My wife and I, um, my wife's an incredible cook and I'm spoiled, but we watch shows like, uh, we're watching one with David Chang right now and the way they talk about food, you know, is the way I talk about artwork, you know? Yeah. They got I those imagine, flavors, man. Yeah, I imagine like musicians are the same way. I One of the artists I work with a lot, um, Ron Riddick, um, He's a he's an amazing artist and we correspond and he likes to talk about paintings using a lot of music terminology, you know, crescendo and notes of color and you got to stay in the same key and you can't like be throwing any note anywhere. You, it has a place and even the space has, a ha, you know, then you need silence in a painting, you know, I'm like, man, that's that's a really great way. Dude, to talk food about is it. people need to eat no matter what. People yeah. need to eat. People don't need to hear a song. They don't I think need they do. like a. Uh, not as much. Yeah, <laughs> I think you <laughs> I... die without food before you die without music. Yeah, I know what you mean though. But uh, but yeah, that's something that, um, you know, as you get older, you want to become a more well-rounded human being. And uh, yeah, stuff like cooking really interests me um i usually just pour it all on there man i just <laughs> cover it in spices garlic and onions I, I put everything on it and just make it really hot <laughs> but. when i was in college um my cousin and i we lived in this trailer and you know our rent was like a hundred dollars a month just to give yeah. you the kind of like picture painting a picture here um we would was buy it a double food. wide? Oh no. No. A single wide. We were um <laughs> we were we were having a great time living there, you know, and we would buy a bunch of canned food and we would tear all the labels off the canned food, shuffle them around in the cabinet, and we'd have mystery dinners like every now and then. Oh my then. god. And That's... we'd be like, All right, ravioli and corn and you know or sometimes it'd be like corn and corn hey you know <laughs> like we just had a, a fun time i remember that being like we didn't plan this we thought it would like you know be fun or whatever and give us variety but nope sometimes it was really disappointing <laughs> that's dope yeah well well where we'll can people Huh? Where, where, before we end this, where can people hear, hear your music? What's your uh, YouTube channel and, and Spotify and all that? Covergeist, C-O-V-E-R-G-E-I-S-T. That's my middle name. My middle name's Cover. Uh, Geist is my grandma's married name. So Cover is grandma's maiden name. Geist is her married name. I've always used it. They were the example of love I had in my life. Just two people that really uh, did it. And uh, I've always respected that. And even though that's not how the music sounds, that's kind of like the core of who I am. But yeah, YouTube, fucking Instagram, it's everywhere. Covergeist. Uh, yeah, YouTube's popping. YouTube's popping, which is right nice. On. Well, cool, man. It's been nice to catch up, and I'm glad you're out of the storm now. Yeah. Yep, I'm inside, safe and sound. Have right a good on. night, bro. You too. All right, take care. All right. Yeah.